How's it going? Welcome to another JV's 12 in the Morning Rant. I am, of course, JV, your host of MCJ Notorious Talk fame, quote-unquote. Good evening, morning, or afternoon, whenever you all decide to grace me with your presence. Either way, I am internally grateful. Oh... So, this one will be a bit of a quick one, because it's a little darker in here than I thought. Hot damn, that darkness will just, the darkness, it will just sneak up on you. So, moving on to the next um, Batman movie on our playlist of animated Batman movies. Um, uh, this one, I, I've heard a lot of these, um, Batman movies. Even though I didn't see them, I never heard of them. Or, even though I've never seen them, I've heard of them before. This one was one that somehow went under my radar. Like, I didn't really think about it until I, like, right before I started playing it. But, I was like, I have... No idea, like, what to expect with this movie. Like, no idea. And one thing I found out about this is that this is somewhat based in the Batman Arkham series universe. Somewhat. It's kind of got a loose... I mean, you could definitely tell it's within the same universe because you'll see familiar Batman villains like Bane, Joker, um, Toothface, um, Harley Quinn, and of course you see Bat. Oh my gosh! God damn it! I need coffee. This is kind of the only bad thing about doing these rants. At a late time is that I'm usually tired by the time I want to do them. But yeah, I had no idea this was kind of based in the same universe as the Arkham games. But, as far as I know, it's never been established that these movies are canon. Or this movie is canon. I'm almost... Actually, I don't even know. For all I know, there could be a number of these movies that are based on the video game that I don't know about. Cause shit, I didn't even know this one was based off of the game. And I was kind of, I was kind of pleasantly surprised in some ways, and then somewhat um, bored of this one. It's Confusing. Well, one thing with this movie is that it's kind of misleading calling it Batman um, Assault on Titan. Assault on Titan. Assault on Arkham. Because I'll just tell you right now, Batman's not in it a whole lot. Batman's in it for the intro. He's in it for a little bit during the second act. I think once to capture Harley. And then at the, you know, he's pretty much there to play by the third act. So, if you're going into this, like, expecting a lot of Batman, um, you're not going to. 
they only show them when they have to. Which is a really weird thing, since it is called Batman Assault on Arkham. And it's also based on his very um, popular series. So, this movie is about, you know, um, what's her name again? Amanda Waller. She has it out for the Riddler, and she has, you know, her SWAT team going after the Riddler because he's got information that she wants. But in the meantime, while she's trying to capture him, Batman's like, no, thanks, he's mine. And then he goes into this big fight against her SWAT team, and, you know, of course, it's the Batman, so he wins. Ultimately catches the Riddler, and then he gets taken to Arkham. In which Waller, now she calls up the Suicide Squad for this mission. And, and since this is in the Arkham game universe somewhat, like I said, I'm sure this is not canon. I'm really sure this is not canon. But whatever the case, <sighs> boy, son of a bitch. Uh, that's another reason I gotta make this quick. I'm gonna get tired really quick, especially if they're a big long yawn after that. Who oh boy? So she assembles her Suicide Squad in this movie. And the, the ones that are lucky enough to make it on the team today, we have Killer Frost, which is one that I've never heard of. Um, King Shark, never heard of him. Um, Black Spider, never heard of him. Um, three you might be familiar with if you're familiar with the Suicide Squad movie. That being Captain Boomerang, Harley Quinn, and Deadshot, which it's funny because those were the three like highlights of of that Suicide Squad movie, even though if it wasn't the greatest. And it kind of had somewhat of um, that movie's intro too for all these people in the Suicide Squad. They just have these like little quick short moments with each of them in action. And it also shows how they're captured. They say, like, for example, like, Harlan Quinzel is, and then she does, like, you know, her her thing. And then it's like, Harley Quinn. And it does that for all the villains in the Suicide Squad. It shows you how they got captured and how they ended up in the, um, in prison or Arkham in the first place. And then it shows... Amanda Waller capturing them all. Oh, and then another one is KG Beast, which is a <laughs> silly name. Nice little play on words. I like it. Don't get invested, though. You know, if you see the Suicide Squad, this same typical babble. It's like, she gives them the mission. She's like, I need you guys to go capture the Riddler and bring him back. Or not bring him back, but get his cane. And then anyone that go, diverts from this plan, tries to run away, disobeys an order and all that, your head gets blown off. And then right away, KG Beast wanted to test this theory, and when did you know it? Um, it didn't go well. His head was, like, completely blown off. It was... It's pretty fucking sweet, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> And, um, look, sorry, I'm looking at something here. I didn't even realize there were that many episodes in the first season. Oh, and uh, this is, speaking of diverting to plan or whatever, um, when I was talking about all these, you'll hear me talk about 
on Music Wednesday, but I talk about Batman themes and how cool they are and which ones are my favorite. Um, and I totally forgot to mention the Batman theme from the Arkham games. But um, I guess I'll just put that on honorable mention as well. Like it really matters. But if I were to say one, um, if I had to put one of them, I would have to say the theme from Arkham City. Just, just to throw that out there. A little mental note for myself. But it's a little too late for that at this point. Because, um, yeah. Oh, brother. Alright, let's get through this. I'm getting too tired too quick. I'm just trying to knot my little head up so I don't have to keep on playing with my hair on my face. There we go. So the mission is done, and all I will say is that this... And I got the sneaking suspicion that this was based around this universe when we ran into the Penguin... Like, this sounds exactly like the same dude that did the penguin in the in the Arkham series. And then slowly but surely, you know, evidence upon evidence, it's just like, oh, oh, this is based off of the fucking video game. Same universe and everything. Like you gotta go look at the Joker and just like when they break into Arkham Asylum, you could see that they're like the Ar- the way the Arkham Asylum looks and the way some of the doors are. If you're familiar with the fucking game, then it's like okay, yeah, they're. I want I almost said ripped off, but paying homage or basing the story around Arkham Asylum. Which I guess is not the worst idea, since Arkham Asylum was such a big game, especially with the bigger sequel. It's like, why wouldn't you want to... Why wouldn't you want to, you know, capitalize on that? I just don't think marketing-wise it was marketed very well. Because, you know, I didn't even know that this movie was out based around this game. And then they choose to make it a fucking quasi-Suicide Squad movie more than a freaking Batman movie. But I will say, especially in the beginning parts, you know, when you're getting things going, it is fun. For all of them, in some ways. Like, um... There are two characters that make, like, Harley Quinn and, um... Deadshot make Whoopi in this. And it's like, uh, okay. I thought it was kind of funny too, because she kind of, she kind of came on to him pretty early. And then he was just like, no, he's like, stop it. He's like really annoyed by it. And then when they get a hotel later, he thinks he's got his own room. He's going to pass out for the night. And then of course, Harley Quinn's there. And then she's all, she was like, oh, hey, she's like, she's not playing like, she's really jumping on him. Like, literally. And then, it's funny, Deadshot's just like... You see this moment where he's gonna, like, resist, and then the light flies. You're like, eh, whatever, fuck it. And then they go for it. <laughs> it's like, oh, I mean, yeah, I don't blame you. It's like, why the fuck not? It's not like... It's not part of the mission. Tear that off. I don't need you there no more. So I thought that was kind of funny. And then another thing too is that they kind of tease a relationship or whatever, a fling between like Killer Frost and King Shark. And I'm not going to lie, it's a little cute. At least I thought so. Like I said, don't get emotionally invested. So yeah, they, they go break into Arkham Asylum. Find the Riddler, and then one of the things that, you know, they have to do is, like, I like the added on, like, they have to keep Harley away from the Joker, because it's obvious that she's just not over him. She's just pretending. I want to say pretending, but she, she may even believe that she is, but, you know, 
At a moment's notice, she would just run back to him. No matter how many times she tells her friends, no, we're done, we're all, we're done, da 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 And then you can tell that she goes outside of her way to try to make the Joker jealous, which is not done by Mark Hamill in this movie, which we do have Kevin Conroy as Batman, so we got that, but no, no Mark in this movie. In fact, but we do have Troy Baker, which he does do the Joker in the Arkham games, at least for one of them, for um, Arkham Origins. So that's cool, because that was basically his role in Arkham Origins was just to be a glorified. Um, he's just supposed to be the Joker, but younger. So, and he did that really well. So you figure it's like, well, you're not going to be doing younger Joker. You're going to be doing Joker Joker from the Arkham games. So. So give it a, so do that, and he does that very well. It's like you can tell, like it's, it's funny. You can tell it. It sounds like Mark Hamill, but you can also kind of tell it's Troy Baker. Just doing Mark Hamill's voice. I don't know. Maybe I'm just saying that because I knew that before going into this. Ugh. Oh, God, I'm itchy. So, it seems like the, with the Suicide Squad, whenever things seem like they're starting to go too easy, you kind of know it's going to start going to shit pretty quick. So, yeah, they encounter the Joker. She tries to make him jealous by saying, I got a new man. Blah, blah, blah. And then... She even tries to shoot the freaky guy, which inadvertently happened, which inadvertently helps him break out later in the movie. And especially this movie, it's funny. In this movie, there's just a lot of Easter eggs to the fucking games, which is weird. I don't know why that was really weird to me. It's like. You got a game that, you know, is showing so much, so much love to the, everything Batman in the games, and then you got a movie that they, you know, do homages to the game for. It's like, that's kind of like, I want to say ass backwards, it's just kind of weird to see, like, the other way around. I thought it was funny. And, um, if I keep on seeing, like, Seeming like I'm distracted on other things. Um, I also have Batman the Anime Series going on in the background. And it's the episode where, you know, there's a new district attorney. She doesn't like Batman. And, you know, and then they all get caught. And then, you know, all the villains in Arkham Asylum that Batman helped put there. They put Batman on trial and have her as his lawyer. This is, a, this is probably one of the better episodes. Spe- especially one of the best episodes because it's just cool to see like all the fucking call the fucking villains in one spot. Then you have fucking Joker as the judge. That's fucking perfect. <laughs> but anyways, so. Early and then at one point in the mo- at one part in the movie, let's get this right. You hear the Killer Frost gets you know insight about a different plan, and then it turns out there was no information inside the cane. Like after they had this encounter with Batman, you're trying to go through Riddler stuff and get the cane so they can get the information that supposedly is in it. And they barely escape, and the last person to come out of the rebel, and they thought it was going to be Batman to, you know, come after them, ended up being Black Spider, and then everyone's all like, you took out the bat? He's like, don't act so surprised, shiz. Okay, and he's all holding Batman's belt, he's like, a nice little token of my win. He's like, okay, alright, we're moving on. 
And then it's not until Frost gets there and gets to the Riddler before everybody else. She's like, well, I've been instructed to kill you. And then he's like, do you even know why she wants me dead? He's like, or no, she's like, well, I don't ask questions. I just do the job. And he's like, the reason, she, and then the Riddler's like, the reason she wants me dead is that I know how to defuse the bombs that they put in your neck. And then you turn around and you see that Riddler has the same little scar that everyone else has on the back of their necks where the bombs were implanted. So it's like, oh, Amanda has other plans. How very Amanda Waller of her. And we all know what she's capable of. And... Yeah, it turns out they just want him dead that way, you know, he can't tell anybody else how to defuse the bombs in the neck. And then And then they all end up catching on that they can get their bombs defused, and then they all get defused. And then Amanda Waller, you know, in the meantime, she's like, Wait, what are you guys doing? So alright, I'm gonna blow all your guys' heads off. And, oh, by the way, the way that they're supposed to destroy the chips is, like, like exposing them to, like, 15,000 volts or some crazy amount of shit like that. So, basically, electrocutes them and to destroy the chips. And then, after Amanda's, like, oh, okay, this is, I've had enough, and you guys are all dead. All of them live except for, um... Except for King Shark because his skin was too thick. So the the electricity couldn't fry the chip like everyone else's. So his chip ends up going up and he dies. And you gotta feel bad for King Frost. Because you could tell she, she liked him a little. Even if she didn't want to admit it. But then again she did show it. So I don't know why she wouldn't want to admit it. Anyways. Not the case. Um... Or not the case, um, not the point. We go into... And then, meanwhile, while this was all happening, Black Spider, you know, was keeping watch, making sure nobody was, you know, doing anything. And then, also in the meantime, or keeping on a watch on the cops... In the meantime, you see Batman wandering through the halls, and he's all acting weird like he's, like, suffering or something. And then J Joker ends up coming across him. And then it looks like Joker's about to blow Batman's brains out. But then, around the same time that King Shark's head blows up, so does Batman's. And it's not until you... The Joker finds the head, he's like... Oh no, that was Black, that was Black Spider, what a big shock, I didn't see that coming at all, and I bet no one else saw that coming, no one saw that freaking twist happening, I mean, it's it's not a bad twist, it's just kind of a predictable one, I mean, no offense to Black Spider or any Black Spider fans, but, I don't know, it's a hard... That was a hard thing for me to try to believe. Like this nobody would be a formidable foe. For the bats. Especially how much they put him up. So yeah Batman dresses up as Black Spider. And then everyone's like wait how come your head didn't explode? You didn't get electrocuted. And then he like gives them the beating. And then Joker comes in and he kind of distracts Batman long enough for them to start running away. And at the same time, Arkham Asylum gets breached and then, like, all the cells open. And there's this really cool part where you see all of these villains come out. And this is when you can tell this is based off of the Arkham Asylum. Especially because then you see your Two-Face, but you especially see Bane straight out of Arkham. You see Poison Ivy straight out of Arkham. And then you, we've already been seeing the Joker and he's straight out of Arkham. And then... You'll see things like in the games, like you'll see Poison Ivy like kiss guards or end mates and you know, all of a sudden they're mind control and she's got her big like plant 
where she like hides in a little pod and shit, and then Bane's just a hulking mass and just like throws shit and like swings his arms around just like in the game. It's pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. I think it's cool just because you know um, I love that fucking game. So why wouldn't I like it? So. At one point, the Suicide Squad, they just kind of give up, and they it becomes everyone for themselves. They all split, and everyone's going for their own thing. Harley ends up going back to the Joker, which is kind of like, oh, Joker, I, I wasn't really with him. I was just, tr- I just went with him just so I can t- sneak in here so I could be with you again. It's just like, uh, whatever. <laughs> this is kind of the part where it started losing me. Towards the ending, it seemed like they didn't quite... It didn't seem like they knew how to end this. Because it's all over the place. And it's kind of cluttered and hard to understand what's going on. Because in a lot of ways, I feel like they didn't really know what was going on and what they wanted to do. And... And as the climax is going, you know... Oh, yeah, and then I forgot about the fact that, you know, the reason that they, Batman was looking for the Riddler is because she was, um, or he was, uh, he had a bomb that he has planted somewhere that's going to explode and, like, destroy part of the city. And it turns out it was in Harley's mallet that she usually swings around. So Batman finds out it's in her mallet, tries to st- tries to take a... F- and defuse it, and then Deadshot at the same time is trying to Deadshot's trying to escape by a helicopter, and you know at the same time Harley and the Joker hop on, and then Batman's hot on their tail, and then it shows that the cops and SWAT are able to de- detain all the inmates and put them back in Arkham. And then there's this, and then there's this point where you know Batman, you know, gets into a helicopter. It crashes into a building. Um, he stops Harley Quinn and then defuses the bomb. And in some, in some weird bullshit, um, Deadshot and Joker have like a hand to hand fight together, and Joker holds his own against Deadshot, which I was like. I never really saw a Joker being like someone that could you know, like go hand to hand with like Deadshot. I mean, that was never Joker's big thing was you know the hand to hand combat, which is why you know when you have a boss fight with him, you know he has to be this big hulky mass, or he has to have a ton of his goons around him if you're gonna fight him. Otherwise, it's like. Yeah, it's not, it's not his field of work. His is all the gadgets and all that, and, you know, making sure, you know, some wacky, kooky stuff happens to you. Yeah, I don't see how him and Deadshot had as close of a fight as they did with each other. And, while it was fun to watch, I mean, animation-wise, this movie looks really good, and the choreography was really fun to see, too, and all that. But, I don't know. I just kind of... A little too... In disbelief to... Or I didn't think that was really how it went. But, I don't know. The movie kind of falls apart towards the end. And after it ends, I was like, okay, that was cool. It was fun. Um, It ends with um, Batman coming in contact with Waller. Oh, and by the way, it, it's... It shows Joker falling down with the helicopter and explodes. And you're like, oh no, is he dead? Probably not. And even Amanda Waller was like, oh, you know, you know, they never found a body for the Joker, right? And then there's a stupid thing where it's like, you know, it's like Batman's walking up to her and he's like, you planned all of this, didn't you? It's like, how do you fucking plan all that chaos? It's like, whatever. 
But it's like, but you still fail because, you know, the Riddler is still alive. So, you still fail and then she... And then Batman gives her a warning. And then she's like, you can't beat me. I'm part of the government or something like that. How do you beat government? And then at the end of the movie, she's just sitting at her chair. And then you see this little red dot. And then he's like, then you hear, she's like, you have got to be... F-. And then it shows Deadshot from a mile away with like his daughter. And... It doesn't really show whether he's like he shoots her or if he's just like giving her like a warning, like, hey, I got my eye on you. I don't know. But anyways, that's the end of the movie. And um It's really fun at points, but at other times it's like confusing and sometimes I didn't know what they were doing, sometimes I don't know if they knew what they were doing. But, nevertheless, I had really, I had a lot of fun with this movie, but definitely not one of the better ones to watch. I mean, if you got the extra time, I mean, like I said, these are all like an hour and 15 minutes long, so if you got the time, give it a shot, but I don't know. I think there's better ones to watch out there, and if I had to grade this, I'd probably give it about a 3.5 out of 5. And that being said, I think I'm about done, and want to go to bed so i hope you guys enjoy this hopefully you got out of this what you wanted to get out of this i'm not sure what you're trying to get out of this but hopefully you got it regardless of what it is but that being said i'll see y'all for the next one y'all have a y'all stay safe